So here we're technically in a new module, but we're still talking about the same the same topics, but just a little bit extra added to it, which is why we're still calling it module 12, part two. Um, but now we're gonna introduce a new idea that's very much related to what we've been seeing in module 12, binomial experiments. So a binomial experiments are random experiments that consist of a fixed number of repeated trials, like tossing a coin 10 times, randomly choosing 10 people, rolling a die 10 times, etc. These trials, however, need to be independent of, in the sense that the outcome is in one trial has no effect on the outcomes in other trials. In each of these repeated trials, there is one outcome that is of interest to us. We call this outcome success. And each of the trials is identical in the sense that the probability that the trial will end is a success in a, is the same in each of the trials. So for example, in our experiment, is tossing a coin 10 times and we're interested in the outcome heads which is our success kinda like in that applet we saw in the last um, module we would see whenever we got heads in that applet it would give us a 1 because that's our success and tails is a fail technically I guess and that's why they give us a 0 then this will be a binomial experiment since the 10 trials are independent and the probability of success is 1 out of 2 in each of these 10 trials so we'll summarize this and give more examples that was the general idea but here's the the most, I guess, the more, the more technical and complicated definition. The requirements for a random experiment to be a binomial experiment are as follows. This would be worth writing down or taking a picture of or however you take notes. First, a fixed number of n trials. Next, each trial must be independent of the others. So if you do one trial, the outcomes of that trial won't affect the next trial. Next, each trial has just two possible outcomes, either a success or a fail. So for example, maybe a, a drug is supposed to cure supposedly some disease. Either it does cure someone, that would be a success, or it doesn't cure someone, that's a fail. There's no other outcome besides cure or not cure, success or fail. So types of studies or experiments where there's more than two outcomes, that, that wouldn't be a binomial experiment. And that's kind of how I remember it, is bi means two. So binomial experiment, two outcomes, I guess. That's how I would remember it. Um, another requirement, there is a constant probability of success for each trial, the complement of which is the probability of failure. So, yeah, that makes sense. The probability of success um, is one thing, whatever it is. The probability of failure, since there are only two outcomes, you know, you're either successful or you're failing, the probability of failure would be 1 minus the probability of success because I think we've seen that before the, the total total probability should add up to 1 if there's only two outcomes these two things should add up to 1 so if you know one of them the other one should be 1 minus the first value in binomial uh, random experiments the number of successes in n trials is random it can be as low as 0 if all the trials end up in failure or as high as n which means you have every single person as a success if all n trials end in success. The random variable x that represents the number of successes in those n trials is called binomial and is determined by the values of n and p. We say x is binomial with n equals something and p equals something. Whatever the case may be in, in uh, each problem. So just, just to go over it again, remember that p, the little p we're talking about here represents prob probability. N is the number of trials, and X, the capital X here, represents the number of successes in those trials. Number of successes. So it's kind of a lot of variables being thrown around here. Successes. What the heck? I can't spell. Oh my gosh. So many C's, so many S's in that word. Huh. Okay, for example, let's look at these random these experiments and ask ourselves, are they binomial or not? If they are, we'll kind of say what what n and p are and that just to kind of help us memorize what n and p stand for. That's important to write down too for this. If you're taking notes, if you're taking if you're taking pictures of notes, that's fine or but if you're writing them down, I would write that. For binomial experiments, p represents probability, n represents the number of trials and capital X represents the number of successes in those trials. So let's look at these in each of these examples, we'll decide whether the random variable is binomial. If it is, we'll determine the value for n and p. If it isn't, we'll explain why it's not. What's making this not a binomial experiment? 
Okay, let's look at the first one. A fair coin is flipped 20, twi 20 times. X represents the number of heads. That would be binomial because it's a. It's not like if you flip a coin 20 times, that outcome will affect the next trial where you flip the coin 20 more times. That's They're not related to each other. Also, there are only two outcomes, heads or tails. So that's that's a good sign. This this is binomial. Yes, a yes, it is binomial. So because it has two outcomes, yeah. Um, n equals twenty because that's the number of times we're flipping the coin. The number of uh, the number of trials and each yeah each coin flip will not affect the next. And the probability of each is 0.5 because we're assuming this is a fair coin. Okay, so done with number one. How about number two? You roll a fair die 50 times. X is the number of times you get a six. Now this is. Now this may seem like it's not a binomial experiment, but we're thinking there are only two outcomes here, because in this the way they described it, it doesn't it doesn't sound like they care what you get. It's either a six or not. So if I get a five, four, three, two, or one, I don't even care what it is. It's not a six. The two outcomes are six or not six. So technically, even though it seems like there's six different outcomes, we're only caring about two of them. Either you got a six, yes, success, or no, I didn't get a six, that's a fail. So it is binomial, it seems like it's not, so we gotta be kinda careful with these. N is 50 because it says we're flipping a, um, a dice 50 times, and the probability of getting what we want, probability of success, success is the probability of getting a six, which is one out of six because a, a fair die, a regular die, has six sides to it. One of them is a six. One out of the six sides is what we want. Okay, so that one was kind of tricky. We might have to be careful here. Number three, we roll a fair die repeatedly. X is the number of rolls that it takes to get a six. So this one, it seems like it may be binomial, but it's not binomial because in this case, if, if like let's say that we mistakenly said yes, it is binomial. Then they'd say, well, what's n? n is the number of times you're doing this trial. Well, they just said repeatedly there is no n. So that's that's the reason first that it's not binomial. Okay, that was kind of tricky as well. Next, number four, let's draw three cards at random from a standard deck of playing cards, one after the other, without replacement. So if I take my first one out, I'm not going to put it back in when I pick the second one. So I have one less card to choose from after I pick the first one, and I move on to the second one. From a set of four cards consisting of one club, one diamond, one heart, and one spade. X is the number of diamonds selected. So in this case, it would not be binomial because these selections are not independent. Because just of what we what we mentioned, it's not there's no replacement. That means if I take out one card, let's say I take the clubs out, then I have a better chance of finding a diamond next time. So the first trial would affect the second trial, and the third the second trial would affect the third trial. And that was one of one of the ways in which we would have to have a binomial experiment is if one trial doesn't affect the next one. The selections are not independent. Yeah, the probability of success is not constant because it it is affected by the previous selections. Okay, how about next? Let's see, number five. Let's say we draw three cards at random, one after the other with replacement from a set of four cards consisting of one club, one diamond, one heart, and one spade. X is the number of diamonds selected. Sampling with replacement ensures independence. So yeah, if I if I take a card out and I just look at it, see what it is, I put it back, that's not going to affect what I get on my next trial when I pick another card. So it should be binomial. Yes, N is 3 because they said they're drawing 3 cards. So we got that. N is 3. And the probability of getting what I want, which it looks like they said diamonds, the probability... P, little p would represent the probability of getting diamonds, because that's what they want, would be 1 out of 4, because it sounds like they said only 1 out of the 4 cards is a diamond. There's 1 club, 1 diamond, 1 heart, and 1 spade. So, okay, that one would be binomial. Okay. The next one, approximately 1 in every 20 children has a certain disease. Let x be the number of children with the disease out of a random sample of 100 children. Although the children are sampled without replacement, it's assumed that we are sampling from such a vast population that the selections are virtually independent. So this one, it would be binomial, yes, because there are only two outcomes. Yes, the child has the disease. No, it doesn't. He or she doesn't. Um, so, and then we're only selecting 100 children at, at random, and they said the population is so large that taking one, one child already out won't affect the rest. 
Um, so this one is bi S binomial. There is a set number. N is 100 because I said there were 100 trials. And they already kind of gave us just explicitly the probability in the very beginning right here. One out of 20 children has the disease. So the probability of me choosing a random child and they have that disease is 1 out of 20. In other words, 0 0.05. Okay, how about number 7? The probability of having blood type B is 0.1. We choose four people at random. X is the number with blood the number of those of, of those four people with blood type B. Yes, that would be binomial because the outcomes are either yes, the person has blood type B, that's a success, or no, it's a fail if they don't have blood type B. So it is binomial. N is four because that's that's the number of trials we're doing. We're only choosing four people at random, and the probability that that person has blood type B is they just gave it to us, 0.1. Okay, so I think it's kind of getting easy. Now that we've seen a bunch of examples, it's kind of getting easier and easier to determine whether an experiment is binomial. The student answers 10 quiz questions completely at random. The first five are true-false. The second five are multiple choice with four options each. X represents the number of correct answers. So if, if this exam, or if we were just focusing on the true or false questions, or if we were just focusing on the multiple choice questions with four options, if we were just focusing on one or the other, this could be binomial because the, the probability changes. But because the first five problems are true-false, for those you have a probability is one out of two. Um, for the, the six through the tenth problems, there's four choices, so your probability is one-fourth, or one out of four, which means the probability changes, and that was one of the requirements that P must stay constant. Um, so this is not binomial.